God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Spoke in the book of John, chapter 15 and verse 5. Remarkable statement that my Lord made. He said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He said, he that abided in me, when the branch abided in the vine, he said, the same bring forth much fruit. And then he ended it like this, after a column <laughs> he ended it like this for without me ye can do nothing I, I don't need a theologian or anybody for that matter to explain to me what that last sentence means Jesus expressly says to me that apart from me, without me, ye can do nothing. So if, if I can do nothing, then I am essentially useless. So he, he's saying that if I, God bless you if you're in Christ. He said, if I am in him, if I have him. And he said, for without me, without me, if I don't have him in me, he said, I can do nothing. Therefore, if I want to do something, then I need to have him in me. If I want to do something, I need to have him in me. That's what he's saying. And I just want to buttress this statement by going to the story of Elijah. In the book of First Kings, chapter 19, from verse 1. First Kings, chapter 19, verse 1. We're going to read and talk about it a little bit. And then we can share together the fellowship. I said the day that is communion. Yeah, that, yeah, that God, God wants to have fellowship with man. Wants to have fellowship with man. And part of having fellowship is being able to come together and sit around the same table. And that's why you have that picture of the Passover with Jesus and disciples. And they sit around the table and they're sharing fellowship together. Before that moment, Jesus said, I earnestly, earnestly desire to have fellowship with you. To God wants to have fellowship with you, wants to have fellowship with me. But the question is, do I want to have fellowship with him? I want to have fellowship. with. So communion is fellowship. Then I said, definition fellowship, fellows in the same sheep. You're together with Christ. You're together with God. And God is in your ship. You're right there. And when God is in the ship, uh, ain't nothing happening to the ship. Glory to God. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rest assured, full assurance of faith that I'm going to get to my destination. So as long as I'm with him and he's with me, I'm all set. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so let, let's look at this, this passage uh, of 1st first, first King chapter, chapter 19 and uh, strength in the bread. And so uh, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Elijah had done some good stuff. And so the news came to Ahab all that Elijah had done. And so Ahab called his wife and narrated every single thing that he had been told about the man of God to the woman. Because the woman is capable of doing some stuff. <laughs> never, you, never you be around somebody who's capable of doing bad stuff. Uh, never you employ somebody to do some bad stuff for you. God's going to get them and God's going to get you too. So, so he, he came to the wife and told the wife everything that the man of God had done. And because the wife is capable of doing some bad stuff, 
the wife sent it wasn't it wasn't Ahab it was the woman who sent a message unto Elijah and saying it said you better be careful Elijah listen to me you better be careful I did some bad stuff to, to those who came before you I'm gonna do it to you too <laughs> no no two individuals are ever the same Say to might have beaten up somebody who looked like me, but it's not me. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, you know, he, he goes around doing some mistaken identity. He thinks that if I got somebody who looked like him, I can get him too. But we're never the same. Uh, no two person is identical. Hallelujah. And you don't be afraid if Satan beats somebody who looked like you, and then you're thinking he can get you, you, you you're afraid. You don't need to be afraid of them. Uh, now, David, if David was afraid of Goliath, Goliath would never die. Uh, everybody, everybody who looked like him, they ran away from Goliath. But when he came and Goliath saw him, he said, I saw folk who looked like you, uh, and I intimidated him. He said, I'm going to give you today to the birth of the air. And he said, no, the battle is not mine. I came in the name of the Lord. Those folk who came before me, they came in their name. But I came in the name of the Lord. He said, today I'm going to deal with you. And you know the end of the story. And the man got the victory. Hallelujah. So you, you see here, and, and Jezebel sent a message to the man of God. And, and the man of God took off on the account of the word of Jezebel. Words are very powerful. Words are very powerful. Somebody spoke a word. A woman spoke a word. And the man of God fled. And he was fleeing for his life because his life had been threatened. And it says in verse 4, But he himself went a day's journey unto the wilderness. He drove himself from the city to the wilderness on the account of the word of a woman. Some of you are running from what somebody said. And you're running into the wilderness because somebody said something. Who can speak when God has not spoken? Who's got the finance say? <laughs> Glory to God. Jehovah's got the finance say. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what folks say. We all listen to what the Lord says. Because he has the final say. Glory to God. And so on the count of the word, the man ran. And, and, and he ran in the wilderness and came and he sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he may die. Not only did he ran in the wilderness, now he want to commit suicide. Man of God want to commit suicide. Why? Because somebody said something. Somebody threatened him. We are threatened on every side. And some of us who are running today are those who are giving up on their lives and giving up on their God. And that's why you need strength in the bread. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> After today, you run to your enemies. You will take the battle to the gates of the enemies. You get home, you tell Satan, you had your day, but this is my day. Uh, you knocked me over yesterday, but I came to knock you down. Not just knock over, but I knock you out. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so the man was running for his life, and he said that I may die. And he said, it is enough now, God. He's talking to God and said, it is enough. It is enough. And, and, and in, verse, in verse 5, and as he laid... And slept. He laid and slept. Thinking he will never wake up again. He laid and slept. You know when stuff are going bad. That's where folk lay down. They wish that they're going to die. And this is the, good, this is the one that is so interesting. That, that when we're going through bad things. That's where we say God Jesus come back. But we're going through good things. We say oh Jesus stay, stay, stay a little bit. I, I need some more time to enjoy life. But when things are bad, you're praying that prayer, Jesus comes today. Come today, Jesus. Come today. Let it end. Uh, you, you forget that some of us don't want it to end right away. Because life is good on the other side. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And so he was, he was laying down and slept under the juniper tree, wishing to die. And then God shows up. God shows up. God has a plan for you. Even when I'm giving up on the plan, God isn't giving up on that plan. When I find myself running into the wilderness, God comes into it with me. When, when I lay my head on my, 
on my pillow and wishing that I die, God is right there with me. And as a man gave up everything thinking he's going to die, God shows up and taps him. And what did God do? What did he do? And as he lay there, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Arise and eat. Did, did he go in there because he was hungry? No. He didn't go in the wilderness because he was hungry. He went in the wilderness because they were after his life. <laughs> and while he was in the wilderness, he gave up his life. But God said, it's not over yet. And so when the Lord tapped him, when he touched him, the next thing God said to him, which is so amazing here, is arise and eat. Arise and eat. He said, I want to feed you with something. I want to feed you with something. Like I said this morning, God called Moses and said to him, I brought them out of Egypt and I fed them all for 40 years. I provided food for them. And they went on the account of that food that God gave to him for 40 years. And the cloak on their back did not wear out. Nor their shoes. Nor their strength in their bodies. Now think about it. Folk who are moving and walking in the wilderness 40 years. No vehicle, no any mode of transportation except they have to move one step after the other 40 years. They have to be supermen to be able to do that. And they did that on the account of the feeding of what God gave to them every morning and every evening. And so when this man was in this situation and he, he lost his strength to continue in the work that God has called him. And as he lay there giving up on himself and on his God, God taps him, touched him and said, arise and eat because you need me to feed you now. That's why we sing that song, feed me until I want no more. I would never be satisfied from eating at your table. He said, rise and eat. And now, what does the Bible say? It says, said to him, the Lord touched him and told him to arise and to eat. And in verse 6, and he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coal and a cruise of water at his side. And he did eat and drink because the law said so. And now he did what? He lay down again. <laughs> he did eat. And then he lay down again. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. But he went right back to his depression. And then the angel of the Lord. In verse 7. Came again the second time. And touched him. And said again the same thing. Arise and eat and now he gave him a reason why he should sometimes we're not motivated to do something because we don't know why we're doing them and sometimes god comes in and tells you why it's good for you <laughs> yes and we all we understand why god is doing what's going sometimes he tells us that the reason i'm doing this is because it's good for you because you need it if you don't get it if you don't take it now you will never be what I want you to be. You need it. I, I, I told us the story before how the eagle will have to take the eaglet up in the sky and let the eaglet go. And, and when it, it, she lets go, the eaglet will need to learn how to flap the wings. And that's good for it. That's good for it. Because the moment that that little eaglet does this. It's, it's breaking through the blood vessels inside of the wing. 
because he's going to need those blood vessels to supply blood to every part of the wing. So he has to do it that moment to break through those vessels. And now, if that didn't happen and the eaglet grows past that stage of life, it never fly. Never fly again. Because there's no blood supply to the wings. And it will be a useless eagle. But when, 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 when the mama eagle takes it out there, you'll be wondering, why do I have to go through this? Do I really need this? And mama said, yeah, you need it. Why? Because it is good for you. And so the angel of God said to, to the man of God, he said, it is good for you. Rise up. Arise and eat. And it came the second time. I said, touch him. Arise and eat. Eat the second time. Why? Because the journey is too great for thee. The reason he needed the bread at that stage of his life was because God knew it, that the journey was great. And he needed that bread for the journey. Without that bread at that time, he would never be able to complete the journey. So God has a reason for coming to that man and giving him food to eat. And it was not milk purchased from some store. God himself prepared it. Glory to God. And that's why, like we said this morning, Jesus in John chapter 6, verse, from verse 31, he said, Our father did eat matter in the desert, and as it written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat, and Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my father gave it you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. The life and the strength that the man needed was in the bread that God prepared for him. Jesus is the true bread. And you have the word of God too. as your bread. And as long as you eat him. Day after day. Doesn't matter how long the journey is. You go through it and you will get to the end of it. That's why we need him. Every day. Yesterday is gone. Today I may need. Holy Ghost fire. Come on me. That's why. That's why we serve him every day. That's why we come to him every day. That's why we read the word of God every day. That's why we fellowship with him every day. Because we know we cannot rely on yesterday's strength. We need today's strength. You know why Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. We need daily bread. Hallelujah. Just bow your heads and pray. Don't know where you are in your journey of life. Maybe you have been driven into the wilderness. Maybe you are on the run. You know what the Bible says? It said only a sinner runs when no man pursued him. Maybe you are on the run. But you need God today. Like Elijah. Elijah gave up everything. He said, no, forget it. I'm not going to do this. My fathers have died for doing this work, but he forgot that he was different. You're not like them. You have God. You have God. Satan, like I said, has some mistaken identity. The fact that he took out somebody like me doesn't mean he can take me out. Because I have God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just whisper to God's ear. I need your strength. Strengthen me, God. The journey is great. But I know I can go through the journey. And I can come to my promised land. Because of your strength. Not by power, not by might. For without him, we can do nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. 
just wave your hand to the Lord and just bless him. Just thank him for the communion. Thank if you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.